Please help me. I'm... I'm scared. Last night, I packed up my suitcase like I always do. A few pairs of shorts and t-shirts. Nothing too complicated. Two bathing suits, some flip-flops, and those mini toiletries you can buy from the travel aisle in Target. My running shoes and some sports bras were included, too. I love to work out, even when I'm on a vacation. It's a blessing and a curse. I slung my backpack on, packed with my iPad and a few snacks, and headed out the door. My boyfriend volunteered to chauffeur me to the airport, if not a little begrudgingly. He was a bit jealous that I was going to have a girls' weekend with my best friend. Not the fact that I was going to spend a few days with her, but that we were spending those few days in Maui. I couldn't really blame him. He dropped me off at the airport and helped me unload my suitcase. He gave me a long kiss before sending me on my way, much to the annoyance of the traffic director that was ushering everyone along. It was a slow day though, so there wasn't too much guilt in the kiss. We're young, we're in love, let us have our moment. After checking in at one of the self-service kiosks and tagging my bag, I went up to have it weighed and accepted. I was shocked when the bag came up 10 pounds overweight. Did someone slip a brick into it as a joke when I wasn't looking? I rolled the bag away to the designated repacking area and began to shuffle through the clothing articles in the bag. We were going to Hawaii for Christ's sake. There was nothing in that bag that constituted it weighing 60 pounds. I stood dumbfounded in the middle of the repacking station, just staring at my bag. I could hoist it over my head, toss it, deadlift it, so what the hell was the matter? I re-zipped the bag and made my way to a different weighing station. This time, the bag read as 30 pounds. I noticed the lane I was previously in had closed and brushed it off as an error in the equipment. The attendant where I was now paused her brows furrowed. Um, your flight has been rescheduled due to inclement weather, miss. Inclement? I just checked my flight information and the weather. Are you sure? I was wary of the previous mistake with my bag's weight and felt sure something similar was happening now. Yes, ma'am. The earliest flight I can reschedule you for is departing tomorrow at the same time. I was a bit flustered now. I hummed to myself and thought, Hmm, can you give me a few minutes? I, I need to call someone. I stepped to the side to allow another customer to be helped while I dialed my boyfriend. He answered on the third ring. Hey, what's up? Did you forget something? No. I knew I sounded frustrated and could imagine my boyfriend taking on a worried expression. They're telling me that my flight is cancelled because of the weather. What? That's crazy. Hold on, let me pull into a parking lot. He paused for a few minutes before speaking up again. Here, let me check the flight details before heading back your way. Another pause. There's nothing on the website or any weather app about inclement weather for your flight. Let me ask the customer service assistant one more time, okay? I considered putting the phone on mute, but decided against it so that my boyfriend could hear the conversation. The flight attendant offered me the same information and called her supervisor over to verify. The supervisor even made a call to triple check. I nodded and thanked them for rescheduling my flight. When I picked the phone back up, I could hear the confusion in my boyfriend's voice. That's so weird. I'm on my way back. Hang tight. I'll text you when I'm there, okay? Thanks, babe. I really appreciate it. This is so annoying. My boyfriend picked me up and we drove home, chatting about the cancellation and my bag's weight. We joked and then sang along to music. I gave my friend a call to tell her about my flight. She didn't pick up. I figured she was probably already on her plane and would get the call when she landed. Later is when things got weird. I took a nap because I got up so early to pack. 
When I woke up, I had a few missed calls from my friend and a note from my boyfriend that he left to go get Chinese takeout. I listened to the voicemails from my friend and realized she had obviously not gotten my call. Jesus Christ! Please, please answer! I, I saw the news! Please tell me that wasn't your flight! Please! The second voicemail was similar. Please, just answer! They, they aren't releasing details! Please be landing any minute! Please, just... <laughs> the line crackled with her sobs. The third voicemail was eerie. It was silent for minutes until the very end. The voice was deep and electronic sounding. You owe us. A shiver ran up my spine and my blood froze in my veins. I turned on the TV and there it was. The flight I was supposed to be on went missing over the ocean. Gone. Vanished. My heart raced as I thought of all the recent downed planes that were never recovered. Could this, could this really be happening? Or am I hallucinating? I'm scared. I feel paranoid, like someone is watching me. Who do I owe? What is happening to me? And why me? I can't relax. I've closed all the blinds and drawn all the curtains in my house. I triple check to make sure all the doors are locked and bolted. I'm hoping that all of this is a prank, but I know that it's not. I feel guilty and anxious. I just want my boyfriend to get back home so I can talk to him, so that he can verify that this isn't some messed up dream I'm having. He made it back and I practically jumped out of my skin when I heard the front door opening. He had a bag in one hand and his car keys in the other. As soon as he stepped inside, I grabbed the food from him and tugged him into the living room where the news coverage on my flight was being dutifully updated. He looked at the TV with his mouth gaping and then turned to look at me like I was a ghost. He shook his head slowly before reaching out to touch me tears gathered in his eyes. What? What if you're dead and I've gone insane? The fear contorted his face and I was speechless. It felt like I had dove into icy water. My body was in shock. I couldn't feel my boyfriend touching me or my body shaking. All I could focus on was the rapid beating of my heart. I sat down and unlocked my phone. It sounds silly, but I couldn't bring myself to call my friend back until someone else was with me. The voicemail had shaken me greatly, and I didn't want to be alone for the sake of chancing my line connecting with whatever haunting voice I had heard earlier. I tapped my best friend's contact to call her back. My phone didn't ring. It made a strange, elongated beeping sound that filled me with dread for some reason. I instinctively threw the phone away from me, onto the far end of the couch, as if it had burnt my hand. My boyfriend was slowly returning to the moment and furrowed his eyebrows at me. What? He questioned, gesturing at the phone. In that split second, I was faced with a decision. Do I tell him about the voicemail? Do I share some of this burden? Or do I err on the side of safety? and shield him from whatever the hell that cryptic message means. I decided on the latter. I love him too much to ever place him in harm's way. I stuttered out an explanation. It, it keeps making a, a, a weird sound. He was obviously still in awe and didn't take much note of my strange behavior. I'm sure he chalked it up to the knowledge that I was here instead of at the bottom of an ocean. After a few minutes, he hugged me. It was a desperate sort of hug that poured out relief and gratitude and love and raw emotion. I hugged him back in the same way and we stayed interlocked like that for what felt like an eternity. 
When we finally broke the embrace, he kissed me on the forehead and went into the kitchen. That's when I got the next call. My phone lit up and I scrambled over to snatch it up and answer it. I hoped it would be my friend, but I knew who it was. I answered it. The same electronic voice answered. You were smart not to implicate your boyfriend. Now he may continue to exist. The line seemed to go dead afterwards, but I remained motionless and silent with the phone pressed against my ear until I heard that haunting phrase again. You owe us. I walked into my bedroom, not really sure what I was looking for. I scanned the room, searching for anything that seemed off. My stack of law school textbooks was still precariously stacked on my bedside table. The bed comforter was still neatly made. The light was still on. I took a deep breath, but a shadow caught the corner of my eye. I shouldn't have done it, but I had to. The shadow was coming from behind the curtains of the window. I brushed them aside and peeked through the blinds. All the wind was sucked out of my lungs. Standing between our house and the neighbors was a man. He gave me a tight-lipped, blood-curdling smile and gestured with his finger for me to come to him. I blinked hard and fast, willing the image of the man that was now burnt forever in my mind to go away. He didn't move. I locked eyes with him, and he moved his mouth slowly. You owe. Us. I burst into loud sobs, hoping that this was a horrible manifestation of survivor's guilt, that I wasn't really indebted to whatever us, the man and the voice on the phone had been referring to. My boyfriend ran into the room, jarred and asking me what was wrong. I, I couldn't tell him, opting instead to bawl into his chest as he held me. With one arm around me, he yanked the blinds open with his free hand. I snuck a glance, and the man was gone. I was momentarily relieved. After we ate and talked and comforted one another a bit more, my boyfriend and I got into bed. I laid there with my eyes bloodshot and wide open, listening to his breathing grow steadily slower and more rhythmic. I had been awake for hours longer than my boyfriend and finally gave up on sleep entirely. I got up and made my way to the bathroom to put my contacts in. As soon as I had done so, my phone lit up. Another call from an unknown caller ID. I answered it once again. Who? Who is this? I choked out into the phone before the voice could come through the line. As soon as I asked the question, the doorbell rang. I dropped my phone and it toppled to the tile on the bathroom floor. I bent down and grabbed it, noting that the call was disconnected. I made my way to the door in a trance, not really sure what I would even do if the man I had seen outside my window was now outside my door. As I approached the door, loud knocks hammered against it. I looked through the peephole and was glad to find that it was the police. I immediately opened the door and asked how I could help them, hoping that they would ward off whoever was calling me. Miss, we need you to come down to our station for questioning about your flight. Our records show that you didn't board the flight today. It went missing almost 12 hours ago. I nodded my head yes. I have nothing to hide from them. I'm typing this last part quickly. I just got changed and brushed my teeth. I told my boyfriend what was going on. The police are waiting in my living room. I'll keep you guys updated as soon as I know more about what's happening. I'm finally home after being at the police station for hours. They realized pretty quickly that I knew nothing of much use. Apparently, they chalked up my flight being rescheduled to a technical glitch. Everything was uneventful until the end of the line of questioning. The officer I was speaking with informed me that the FBI had been called in to take over the investigation. At first, I didn't think much of this. To me, the FBI seemed like a natural step in the process of solving a possible act of terrorism. 
It wasn't until I left the interrogation room that I saw him, the man from outside my window. He was wearing a suit and looked important. He commanded the attention of everyone. Officers were diligently listening to him as he spoke about the missing plane, scribbling down notes as he went. I couldn't move my feet from their position on the floor. A few minutes later, he finished whatever speech he was giving and began to walk towards me. I couldn't breathe properly. My vision was blurry from the fear eating me alive. Hello, miss. I'd like to thank you for coming in on behalf of the FBI. I gaped at him. He smiled that tight-lipped smile that I knew would haunt me for the rest of my life, regardless of how long or short it may be. You must still be in shock, which is completely normal. But you can rest assured that we will find the plane. Give everyone closure. I nodded my head in silent agreement. Would you mind stepping out with me for a few minutes, miss? I looked around, bewildered. Nobody seemed to take any interest in the interaction between us. I knew that it wouldn't matter whether I said yes or no. I was going to have to be alone with this man. Sh sh sure My voice shook hard. I had never heard myself sound more irresolute. He smiled again, guiding me to the back door of the police station and holding the door open for me to step out. He followed suit, and we were swallowed up in silence compared to the bustling interior of the building. The man leaned against the side of the building as if this were the most casual thing in the world, as if a plane wasn't missing as if I hadn't seen him standing outside of my window last night. We stood there in silence for a few minutes. I waited for him to begin the conversation, to say anything. You're quite the lucky woman, <laughs> He chuckled to himself. Let me ask you something. Do you think luck exists? Karma? Fate? I turned to face him. I... I'd like to... My voice wavered as it trailed off. The man didn't respond to me at first. I couldn't tell if he was satisfied with my answer or not. Interesting. I'll see you soon, miss. Before I could say anything, he brushed past me, opened the door, and disappeared into the hordes of officers and agents milling about. After waiting a bit, I made my way back inside, made a beeline for the door, and drove home. My boyfriend started badgering me with questions as soon as I walked through the door. I did my best to answer all of his inquiries, but he could tell I was exhausted. It was still fairly early in the afternoon, so he proposed that he would drive to the grocery store and buy some things for dinner while I napped. I kissed him in appreciation, admiring him and the love I have for him. As soon as he left, my phone lit up. I answered, preparing myself for the eerie voice. Instead, it was the voice of the man from earlier. Hello again, miss. Listen closely. You will report to this address. Leave immediately. Tell no one. I look forward to seeing you again. Before I could manage a response, the line went dead. I steeled myself grabbing my keys off the counter and sliding into my car. I knew I was being stupid. I also knew that this was unavoidable. Either I went, or he would come get me. When I arrived at the address he had given, I parked and tried to regain my composure. Before I could even take 30 seconds to do so, my passenger door had opened and shut, and the man from the police station was in the car with me. He told me that he was a shadow, part of the cryptocracy, that I am now indebted to them, that I will join them, I will serve them. Why? Why me? You have potential. You can carry this weight with us, together. He leaned over and whispered something into my ear before getting out of the car and striding away. I drove away completely dazed. I felt like I wasn't in charge of my body, or my thoughts, 
or, or anything. Every bit of control that I had ever believed I had was dissolving. I talked out loud to myself in an attempt to calm down, but trying to piece together my sanity was futile. It was slipping through my fingers right in front of my eyes. I stumbled inside, blind to the world around me. My boyfriend wasn't home. I sat down on the couch and started typing this. Maybe instead, I should kill myself. I'm scared. I'm scared that I'm going to live. That I'm going to carry more burdens like this. Forever. That I am now Atlas, shouldering the knowledge of all of the messed up things in this world. My phone lit up. I answered. It was an electronic, deep voice. We will come for you soon. You have much more to learn. I, I thought I was insane. I thought that maybe I was suffering from schizophrenia. That maybe I have cracked under the weight of my guilt for not boarding that plane yesterday. That there's been a break somewhere deep inside of me. But it made sense. It makes sense. They run everything. They know everything. Nothing that happens is without reason. There's, there's someone at the door. I can prove they're real. Be careful. The Night Stalker, the Zodiac Killer, the Axeman, W. It was all encrypted.